Doom Eternal is considered by many as the best game in the Doom franchise. With the best graphics so far and the intense gameplay, it's not really surprising. But even with award-winning games, there are some who question if they are good or not. And that is where I come in with the list of 10 good and bad things in the game Doom Eternal. We will start with the 5 good things. Number 1. Music. Well, of course that it will be the first good thing on this list. With captivating rock music played in the background as you kill plenty of demons, there's no real reason for it to be bad. The music was composed by Mick Gordon, who stated that the real side of the music is to connect emotionally for the player, which he managed to create astoundingly good. This music helped the player to get into the mood and intensity of the game, which also increases the level of adrenaline as you play it. I really enjoyed going through the game while constantly being reminded to move fast and keep being alerted. And also, rock music is always a plus to me. Number 2. Combat There is a lot to say about the combat. With a big selection of abilities and enemies, there are a lot of things that you'll need to learn and embrace, such as which strategy and weapon are the best for which enemy, what are their weak points, and you also need to be aware of your surroundings. As the game progresses, things are getting tougher and require you to advance your usage in almost every weapon. The combat is very fast paced and you'll need to be on the move all of the time. And if you stop at one point, you will quickly die. For me, it was a very unique experience. Although I did play plenty of first person shooters, none of them was as extreme as this one. Although it wasn't very easy for me to fight so many enemies at once, all while maintaining movement and strategy, it was very fun and challenging. Number 3. Variety The variety is just superb. There are so many different enemies and weapons. Basic one, which are basically bullets, and two secondary ones that are like grenades and more. Although there aren't a lot of bosses, there are some tough enemies that are somewhat like mini-bosses, but not exactly because they spawn together with all the others at some point. There are about 28 types of enemies including the bosses, which is a very large variety in compared to most games. Here are a few examples. Revenants, which are flying with jetpacks and shooting missiles at you. Krakas, which are using an electrical shield and shooting annoying beams. And pain elementals, which are really tough flying monsters. Regarding the weapon, there are 15 of them. And as I said before, most of them had three types of ammunition. Here are a few examples. The Crucible Blade, which is the most powerful one and can only be used if it's charged. The Plasma Rifle that can shoot plasma bullets, a heat blast and a microwave beam and the ballista that can shoot regular bullets, a precision shot, and projectiles. Other than that, there are also flamethrower and grenades. I decided to focus on the enemies and the weapons, but there are also a good variety of power-ups and armor types. So yeah, there is a large variety of things. Number 4. Upgrades Now that we established the elaborated variety of things in this game, let's talk about the upgrades. You can upgrade your armor, your weapons, and your overall health and ammo capacity. There are also perks that you can assign to yourself, but I will not elaborate on this. In order to upgrade your suit and grenades, you'll have to achieve tokens. You can find these tokens in almost every level, and you can also unlock them in your base by using Sentinel batteries. There are a lot of things that you can upgrade with these tokens, such as fundamental suits abilities, exploration abilities, and grenades. Other than the tokens, you can upgrade most of your weapon by engaging with floating robots that you can find in each level and in your base. You can upgrade the weapon by upgrading the secondary ammo, and each of them have at least two upgrades, which means that you can upgrade a weapon at least four times. Not all weapons are upgradable, but most of them are. 
In short, there is a very large variety in upgrades as well. Number 5. Visuals I wouldn't refer to this game as the first of them all, but it is very beautiful. The landscape is very large and stunning, although it's kinda hard to stop and appreciate it, in the moment that you do have the time, it's really worth it. Whether it's in your base or in one of the world, the details of the environment are stunning as well. The electrical chart that sparks off machines, and in general the environmental particles are pretty good to look at. The details on the character is also very well done. The glory kills, which are presented as a short animation where you kill the enemy, are also very detailed and gory, which is actually a good thing because it's Doom. What kind of Doom player wouldn't want to see those moments? I really enjoyed looking at the purple blood and the colors of the enemies, but maybe it's just me. My favorite part though was to explore the main base and see all of the beautiful lights and different looks of the machineries. I really enjoy doing these kind of videos for you guys, but unfortunately at the moment I cannot do it full time, which is something that I'm aiming for. So if you don't mind, please consider to subscribe, to leave a comment, to leave a like, and let's continue with the video. The 5 bad things Number 1. Not for beginners the game seems very cool and interesting, and there is a big amount of people that would like to play it. But due to this game being so fast and even complicated, people who have barely played the first person shooter game before will have a very, very hard time to play this one. And you can argue that they can start in Doom 2016, but it's not the same, and it will take too much time, so it might not even worth it. Now, there are a lot of things that we can say about the last sentence, but we will leave it at that. Now the fact that the game is hard and challenging is not a bad thing. And honestly, I wouldn't want it any other way. What I would have suggest though is to create a baby difficulty for those who are completely beginners into FPS. It will make the game much more accessible to new players and potentially increasing Doom's fanbase. I just want to make one thing clear though, I'm not saying that this game is impossible for beginners, I'm saying that this is a bad game to start with. Number 2. Spending Sentinel Batteries on Skins In your main base, or the mothership, there are chambers where you can find all kinds of upgrade materials, skins, and secrets. Each chamber requires you to unlock it with an item that's called Sentinel Battery, two of them to be exact. You can find these batteries in almost every level and by completing special missions. There are three special missions in every level. Now here's my problem. These things require you to explore the levels in order to find them, and it's not always simple and easy. And after you get them, you might find yourself spending them on skins. Well, not just skins, but secrets as well, which are completely useless in terms of practicality. And it is a big waste in compared to the other stuff that you can unlock, such as upgrades. You only have a limited amount of 18 Sentinel batteries, and spending them on things that aren't helpful will make your game somewhat harder. I remember the moment that I realized that I spent them on a skin rather than on an upgrade, and that was frustrating. Number 3. Controlling a Demon Some games allow you to control other characters, however, Doom was never really one of them. But in this game there is a one segment where you can control a revenant in order to get a weapon. I personally found this moment very enjoyable. It is fairly at the beginning of the game and when your enemies are pretty tough to handle and then out of nowhere you can control one of them and kick their butts because the revenant is fairly strong. Not just that, the revenant can also fly which makes it even more fun. But wait. If I liked it so much, so why did I put it on the list of the bad things? Well, that's because this ability only appears once in the whole game. Yes, I forgot about it pretty fast during my gameplay, but when I'm looking back, I really wish that there were more segments like this. They could have even added to the last boss fight and make it interesting in a different way. But anyway, it's a shame that they made it happen only once in the game. Number 4. Storytelling The Doom franchise was never really big on the story side of things, so it's quite understandable that the story is not very elaborated or complicated. 
Moreover, it seems that in Doom Eternal they tried to put an emphasis on the story, which is something that I actually like. However, the storytelling process is very tedious and a bit asymmetrical. The first levels are almost empty of story content and mainly focusing on fighting, which is not necessarily bad, but adding more context to the story would make it a bit better. In most levels there is a short part of the story at the beginning and a short part at the end. Between this part there's only repetitive fighting and small missions. I'm not complaining about the repetitive fights because that is the essence of the game and it's not a bad thing. But the time gap between the beginning part and the ending part of this level is pretty long and it's easy to lose the plot. Later on the storytelling is changing and story parts are appearing more often. My main problem with the storytelling process is that it's really easy to lose the plot of the game and even more when you try to make it a part of it. They could have found a better way to give the player more engagement with the story. Number 5. Too long. Now the game itself is not very long. A 15 hours game today is relatively short to be frank. But due to the storytelling process and all of the things that are between the beginning and the end of a level, it does feel that it's taking a long time. You can also do other things than the main campaign, which will make the game even longer. The game being repetitive takes its toll, and by the end of it, you will feel like you spent a very long time playing it. And that was the list. In conclusion, although the game feels very long, it's full of amazing spectacles and energizing music. The storytelling was a downfall for me, but the story itself was pretty good. The combat is accelerating and the variety and upgrades are top tier. And at the end of the day, this game has a massive fanbase, which is no surprising at all. I would rate this game as a 9 out of 10. If you played this game, please let me know what do you think about it in the comments below. Now you take care of yourself, have a great day, have a great night, have a great whatever. I'll see you next time and don't forget, enjoy your games.